Why? Why is everybody shooting film again? It's easy to brush it off as a fad, that people just like the crusty look of a point-and-shoot camera. But dig a little deeper, and you'll find something much more powerful. How film alters the way we experience our lives. Nothing is more precious and intimate to us than our memories, and in an age where our phones relentlessly capture every detail of our lives, film offers an enticing alternative, a different path, one that people assumed would become abandoned. I started shooting film over 10 years ago, when it looked like it was about to die out forever. But now, people are flocking to film by the millions. Whether they realize it or not, people are attracted to film because of something intrinsic and fundamental to the medium itself, something that I'd like to discuss with you today. Digital is incessant. It's brutal. It's everywhere. There's really no escape from it in any major city. It's easily altered and forged. It's hard to know what to believe anymore. When digital first came out, people couldn't wait to be able to take unlimited photos. It took us 20 years to finally start asking if unlimited photos is actually a good thing. Analog is honest. It's deliberate. It's not in a rush. It's got nowhere to be. In fact, it asks you to be patient a virtue that's sorely lacking in a world where we have access to literally everything at our fingertips. A world in which anything longer than two-day shipping makes us go, ugh. Just about everything we use nowadays is designed to cater to our every whim as consumers and to be extremely convenient so that we spend tons of money. Meal kits, e-commerce, delivery, rideshare, it's all designed to be as close to instant as possible. Film simply isn't. And I think it's a welcome break, a reminder to slow down and not sweat the small stuff. You don't really need your photos right away. And if you've talked to anyone that's ever shot film, you know that waiting actually makes the whole process a bit more exciting. The anticipation, the payoff of getting your photos, reliving your memories in the order that you captured them. Film's also a one and done thing. I mean, how many times have you been trying to take a group photo and it seems like it never ends. Your friend doesn't like the way she looks, then another friend says, okay, wait, let's uh, face this way instead. And now uh, you're being held hostage with a fake smile on your face. With film, there's no reframe, no redos, just point, shoot, click, get back to experiencing your life in the present. If the photo comes out well, it's a rewarding surprise. If it doesn't, then it wasn't meant to be. And that moment has the freedom to be lost to time a freedom that we've been robbed of by digital. The prospect that some of your photos may be lost forever somehow makes the ones that do turn out all the more special. Digital is the opposite. There are thousands of photos on your phone that you'll never look at again, but nonetheless, your phone and the cloud store them unfailingly and for eternity. <laughs> I mean, really think about that. There are thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of photos on your phone that you will literally never look at again before you die. It would take 485 photo books to hold all of the photos in my phone. Just the videos alone would take me days to watch. Meanwhile, all of the film I've ever shot fits neatly into this binder. Why? Well, it has to do with one of the greatest assets film has. It's finite. Film doesn't care that your new phone can store 100,000 photos. Film gives you 24 shots, 36 if you're lucky. If it's good enough for grandpa, it's good enough for you. Honestly though, you may be surprised by how much your photography changes when suddenly you're up against a limit. In fact, limits can do wonders for the creative process. Just look at Vine. Six and a half seconds force creators to be concise and boil their content down. Film does the same. Instead of going trigger happy on your shutter button, you have to stop and really think about if this moment is worth capturing. Half the time I turn my film camera on, I don't even take a photo. And I think that's a great thing. Instead of facing thousands of images after I get back from a photo shoot or a vacation, I face 36. There's one last part about film that I think is really cool, and it has to do with how the images are actually made. Your camera exposes film to light for just a fraction of a second, but that's all that it needs. When light hits the photosensitive chemicals, it reacts with them to create what's called a latent image. This image then gets tucked away in the canister of the film, waiting for the right moment to shine like a caterpillar in a cocoon. That moment comes when you take your film to get developed, and some more magic happens to give you that final photo. 
This effect is extra cool when you're using slide film, as you're seeing the scene itself, colors and everything. With digital, it's all just ones and zeros, photoresistors and switches. Now look, I majored in computer science. You'd think that I, of all people, would be all for ones and zeros. But honestly, it feels a little flat and lifeless compared to film. Digital is just kind of a soulless copy or a clone, whereas with film, you're actually looking at a tiny piece of the light rays that were present when you captured that moment. When you put slide film in a slide projector, you reanimate those light rays and give them new life projected across your wall. This yearning for authenticity in analog is a fascinating movement in our time, and it's not just limited to film. It's the same way with vinyl records. I mean, for a few bucks a month, you can have unlimited access to a hundred million songs, and yet people are actively choosing to buy records, a choice that seems completely backwards and paradoxical. And yet, record sales are up year over year, showing that perhaps an unlimited well of music to choose from actually cheapens the whole experience of listening versus being intentional and picking out your favorite record on the shelf. I may make a video about this in the future, so subscribe if you want to see that. Okay, now look, I'm not trying to say that we should all delete our camera app and become cavemen with Kodak point and shoots. Digital is amazing in its own right, no doubt, but I'd really encourage you to give analog a chance if you haven't already. I'll put some links in the description to help you get started. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support and it encourages me to make new videos like this. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week where we explore a new topic together.